Shalom. Shalom. Man, today already started off rough. Already started off rough. First I get this straight message from this person. Cause conflict. So it gets like when you're trying to get ready for service. You know, I like my, and I'm finding my scriptures, I like my mind to be, like, preoccupied, preoccupied on the things of the Most High. So that's already just, like, made me, you know what I'm saying, your mind starts thinking about other things, but, you know, teaching the people. Then, um, then when I was at, I got to the library parking lot, and you gotta check in your hours, like, you gotta schedule your hours. So I went in there, and everyone in front of the door was a big group. Doing some little kumbaya stuff, like holding hands and charging up their key or whatever, Super Saiyan mode. I guess it's like some Vietnam day or something. I guess it's like a Vietnam, I don't know what it is. So they're having like this meeting in front in the door. And I went to the person, I'm like, hey, is the library open? She's like, oh no, I'm here for this and this and this and no one knows. So about like 10.05, 10.07, I was like, man, I got to go. There's all police officers there and everything. So I dipped to my normal spot, which is here. And once again, it's the Vietnam flag. People were driving with Vietnam flags and American flag. It's kind of like a Cinco de Mayo, but for Vietnam or China or Asia or Cambodia. I don't know what the flag is, a yellow and red flag. So this whole parking lot, super packed, a whole bunch of people. I had to park way over there, you know, so that's why I'm late. Because between the library and their little celebration day, I don't know what it is, caused me to have to walk like three blocks to get to here. And the library is closed. So, please be patient. Other than that, I'm already sweating because of that, trying to be on time. Other than that, uh, praise the Almighty. Um, definitely thank the Almighty for today. Hope you guys are doing all right. About to get into the book. I was like, Almighty, what am I going to teach? Praise Almighty. Okay, some people on. Shalom, shalom, everyone. Um, definitely thank, thank the Almighty for this week. Thank the Almighty for the Zooms. Thank the Almighty for the brothers and sisters across the whole planet, man. You know, uh, I was looking at places in uh, Africa, you know, and, um, and some of them were false church, but they went in. Uh, it was a Sunday worshiping Catholic church. And uh, there's groups in Africa that are killing uh, Bible-believing people. And the reason why I use those as an example is because uh, these sinners, they don't care if you're Catholic, Methodist, Episcopal. If you believe in the Bible, they come in to kill you. So that still applies to us. Um, and uh, they killed men, women, and children. They killed a lot of them. They went in and just murked them. Like, more uh, died than actually survived. And uh, you see, if we believe this truth... In places in Africa, if someone believed the same thing you believe right now, well, um, well, um, you know, any brothers out there in that location, I forgot where it was, um, they, they're really, their life is on the line for this gospel, you know, and, and really know that we haven't even started Bible prophecy persecution yet. So, um, really having the faith like the book of Acts when. They were getting hauled off to prison. They were getting killed for believing and um, dealing with some of these Muslims and their Shia and these Arabs and not Arabs, um, but uh, Islam. There we go. This Islam and all that stuff, the Quran and all these people be coming after Bible believing people. And so um, my heart definitely, you know, prayers go out to these people. And I don't see it like the news. Like I literally pray for these people, the people in the news. Oh, my heart goes out to these people don't even believe in the most high. But. Um, definitely um, those brothers across the whole planet really holding a standard and keeping the faith knowing that anytime you come they might have to do like the book of Acts and go from house to house to have service they can't have a building to where people can know when you worship and roll up and they rolled up on uh, Pentecost they uh, they did it on Pentecost because um, I guess that Catholic Church keeps Pentecost which is surprising because I don't thought Catholics don't keep any feast days but uh, they rolled up on Pentecost and smashed on them it was a Sunday and uh, so they were keeping it on the right day, but they smashed on them. And so um, all those brothers across the whole planet holding a standard and the almighty seas, you know, us in the States and us in 
and the, any any ones that has the common luxuries like drive throughs and stuff like that you know for us to not serve hard in these other places they they put in their life on the line our life really ain't on the line you could lose a job for not taking a jab or you could lose a job for not keeping the sabbath but we're not getting killed for not taking the jab or not keep, or keeping the sabbath or coming to worship on the sabbath day we don't have to worry about people coming into our congregations and just laying loose and getting away. They didn't even catch none of the people, too. They didn't even have no suspects. So it's like you didn't even get justice done. But at that point, the man at that congregation should have rose up and said, check this out. We're going to have the Sabbath. We're going to have armed guards. Let them roll up again. Let them roll up again. That's the, that's the first thing. We see it in Maccabees. We see it in Hezekiah. And I was talking to the brothers and sisters. And I'm going to get to service right now. That the whole Old Testament is about war. The whole Old Testament, a fight. You know what I'm saying? Abraham dealing with these Canaanites and the Armites filling up their wells. Isaac dealing with these people and he's trying to dig a well because they buried his father's well. Jacob, um, they go into Egypt being persecuted and oppressed by people and they're fighting for their freedom. They get into the wilderness. They had to fight there. They get out to the wilderness, to the promised land. They fought. Then we set up the judges. They fought. Then they set up the kings, David and all the kings fought. And the whole Old Testament was about war. And so I don't see how people don't understand that, A, there is a time, there's a time to laugh, there's a time to mourn, there's a time to kill, there's a time to make a war, there's a time for peace and there's a time for war. And if you got to set up and you got to strap up and you have service and A, some people come rolling and want to kill the saints of the Most High, those brothers should be at security guard dressed all nice don't even know they armed they roll up because the people got away so hey have the brothers and sisters do what you need to do and you just smash on those hey if if we got to fight for what we believe then we fight for what we believe amashiach says hey there's a time where hey you need to bring a sword and like all oh, we have to like it's enough but he said there will be a time it says the wicked one's going to make war against the saints and shall prevail against them so that means he's making a war that means we're fighting for our food even if we fight so people don't take your your eggs or your chickens to take your resource because if they come and take your chickens and they come and take your goats and they come and take your resources then you and your family starve to death so you're still fighting for your life they're not coming to take a tv they're coming to take your livelihood your food you know so um you know i'll, I'll be praying hopefully you know they'll be able to recover yeah i know they're catholics but i'm looking at it the bigger the bigger aspect of it is there's people that believe in this bible and these sinners don't care what denomination you are you believe in the bible they coming at you you believe in the torah they coming at you regardless they don't care oh well i'm gonna let you live because you worship on the sabbath and you're a catholic and i'm just gonna kill it no anyone that believes in the bible they coming at you so all the brothers and sisters across the whole planet in the trenches keep the almighty's commandments statutes judgments precepts and ways even through persecution hey you know, my prayers to you guys keep standing. All the ministers, apostles, the prophets, evangelists, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, the deacons across the whole planet. Teaching, living, and persuading people to repent from their sin and come to this gospel. Definitely give all honor. I'm doing it backwards today. All honor to the Almighty. It's warm today. The Almighty, Yah, through His Son, Yeshua Mashiach. Um, all honor to Him. You know, without Him, I will be nothing. He says us, he gives us the ability to establish wealth, our immune systems, our white blood cell count. You know, even think about autoimmune system where your white blood cells attack uh, your, your body and take it as a, a sickness or a disease and it attacks itself. Um, you know, I think the almighty that he even regulates that at any time, you know, he could take us out and that ties into this service. So definitely thank the almighty thank you all people that's on the Facebook and YouTube. I want you guys to be saved and make it into the kingdom. Do what it takes to be saved. If you read it and you understand it, regardless if you have a congregation or not yet, you do need a congregation. But if you read it and you understand it, just obey it. At the end of the day, just obey it. You know, uh, <laughs> we're just going to come right into what I'm teaching today. Just obey it. Uh, let's get into the book because this lines up right on our teaching. I got to switch this up because the sun is on me and it's hot today. So we're going to try to switch up the game real quick. Hopefully it's not too dark.
that too dark? Is that, is that too dark or no? Like I said, being done, let's let the fingers do the walking and the scriptures do the talking. Give me uh, Jonah, Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 1. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. broke my computer second computer I broke I, I was eating I had a plastic spoon on the computer and when I shut it it didn't shut right I opened it up and the plastic spoon pierced the screen and now it's all like a broken phone all color distortion this distort it there we go Jonah chapter 1 and I was trying to take it to the shop to fix my other computer so it's like ah uh, so my trading it's got to come to a halt but I was lacking on this uh, on my scriptures anyways I make it up on the Sabbath but I was lacking so I was like maybe the Almighty's like hey you need to focus on what you need to focus on you know and he gives us the ability to, of wisdom to establish wealth anyway so seek first the kingdom and all his righteousness Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 now the word of the Almighty came on uh, onto Jonah the son of Amatea saying arise go to Nineveh that great city and cry against it for the wickedness uh, for their wickedness and and is come upon before me and Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Almighty and went down to Joppa and he found a ship to Tarshish and he paid the fare thereof and he went down in it and he he go with the Tarshish from the presence of the Almighty I always like Jonah though because Jonah's like the one the Almighty tells him what to do and he's like oh man I'm out he dips he tries to dip on the most high like how are you just gonna just dip on the most high like like he just doesn't know what's going on on the whole planet but i'm gonna be if and i get in the kingdom i'm gonna be asking them some questions like hey why'd you just where, where where was you it's like a little kid you know a little kid they're gonna get a spanker our little kids in trouble our little kids trying to run for mom it's like where are you gonna go where are you running to you know what i'm saying but let's keep going uh so uh, i'm gonna read to, to six uh but the Almighty sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried, Every man unto his, to his God, and cast forth wares for the ship into the sea to lighten it of it. But Jonah was gone down on the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. And the shipmaster came unto him and said unto him, Wake, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise and call upon thy God. If so be that God would think upon us that we perish not. So the Almighty, he tried to dip on the Most High. He didn't want to do what the Most High told him to do. So he dipped out. The Almighty sent a storm. So you guys already know. Read the rest of the story. It's a short story. He repented because the Almighty sent some trouble his way. And then uh, he said, go preach to Nineveh. Go do what I told you to do. So he went. He preached. He did what he told him to do. And the people repented. So this is chapter 4 now, verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1. But it, it displeased Jonah exceedingly. So Jonah was hot. And he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Almighty and said, I pray thee, Almighty, was it not in my sand when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before the Tarshish, because I knew thou art a gracious, almighty, merciful, slow to anger, great in kindness and repentance of the evil. Therefore I now, O Lord, take, I beseech you, my life for me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Almighty said, uh, and then he said unto the Almighty, uh, then said the Almighty, do thou well to be angry? Does it profit you to be angry? So, he was hot. He didn't want to do what the Almighty told him to do. And he was hot because of it. Now, I'm just laying the foundation. Go ahead and give me Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. And we'll start at verse 8. Exodus chapter 3. Verse eight, and I and and I came down to deliver them out of the hand of Egypt to bring them out of the land of the uh, uh, land unto a good land, a large a land of flowing with milk and honey, 
a place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, cry unto the children of Israel, come on to, uh, uh, come on to me. I have also seen the oppression wherefore the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee to Pharaoh, that thou might bring my forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So he says, hey, you're going to go and bring the people out. And Moses said unto Almighty, Who am I that I should go to bring Pharaoh, that thou shalt bring forth my ch the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a sign, a token unto thee, I have sent thee, where thou brought forth the people of Egypt. Thou shalt serve me, serve the Almighty upon this mountain. Right? Let's keep, keep going. I'm going to go to chapter 4, verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1. And Moses answered, Behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto me, for they will say, The Almighty have not appeared unto me. And the Almighty said uh, uh, said unto him, What is in thy hand? Hold up, the wind's blowing. What is in thy hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it upon the ground. And he cast it upon the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled before it. And the Almighty said unto him, Put forth thy hand, and take it by the tail. And he took forth the hand, and caught it, and it became a rod into his hand. That they may believe that the Almighty thy Yah of their fathers, the, the Almighty of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, have appeared unto thee. And the Almighty said, Furthermore, put forth thy hand into thy bosom. And he put forth his hand into his bosom. And then when he took it out, behold, it was leprous as snow. So obviously he had color and not like these false Jews. And he said unto them, um, Put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom and he plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And, he, and, and it shall come to pass that they will not believe, neither hearken unto the voice of the first sign, they will believe the voice of the latter. This shall come to pass that thou will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto the voice, thou shalt take up the water of the river and pour it on the ground, and the water which thou takest in the river shall become blood upon the dry, the dry land. And Moses said uh, unto the Almighty, All Almighty, I am not eloquent in speech, neither therefore since I have spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of anger. So it's like, oh, they're not going to believe me. And, oh, you know, they're going to say, what God you serve? And and so he's coming up with excuses. But let's keep going. And the Almighty said unto him, Who have made man's mouth? Or who have made the dumb, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Almighty? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O Lord, sin, I pray thee, by the hand of him who thou wilt sin. And the anger of the Almighty was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he could speak well also. Behold, go forth and meet thee, and I will, uh, And when he see thee, he will be glad in his heart. So at the end of the day, he just didn't want to do it. So he's like, oh, they're not going to believe me. Oh, what, 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 they're going to say, who sent thee? Oh, you know, they're, they're going to say, show me. And he gave all his excuses. He said, the Almighty gave a solution to all his excuses why he didn't want to do it. So at the end of the day, he finally decided to be honest and say, send someone else. Yeah, you gave me these signs and the bosom and the snake and the rod and the waters of the blood. Uh, and you gave Aaron for me to help me speak. Just send someone else. He flat out just said he didn't want to do it. So Almighty was angry. So here's the second time when the Almighty calls someone and they don't want to do something. But let's keep going. Give go ahead and give me Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel chapter 4. Ezekiel chapter 4. Verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 1. Lie thou, he's talking to Ezekiel, a prophet, and he had to do signs, as you could, as we're about to read. It says, Lie thou upon thy side on thy left side, and lay the, the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of the days that shall lie upon thou shalt bear their iniquity. I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of days, 390 days, so thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie on the right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah, as I appointed each day of the year, and thou shalt set thy uh, face towards Jerusalem and thy arm shall be uncovered and thou shalt prophesy against it so now he has to lie down on one side and then he has to lie down on another side and he has to bear the iniquity of Israel now we coming into this gospel imagine you just coming into this gospel because this is when Ezekiel came on the scene the almighty raised him up and it says yeah check this out I'm going to use you and you're going to bear the iniquity of Israel you're going to be assigned to Israel 
and you're going to bear their iniquity. Like, you're like, I don't want to do that. Like, why do I got to do that? Forget Israel. Israel, I'm obeying. I'm keeping the commandments. Why I got to bear their iniquity? Because they disobey. But let, let's, let's go further. Go ahead and give me Ezekiel. Uh, we'll read through 17. Ezekiel, uh, no, uh, go ahead and give me Ezekiel 24. Ezekiel 24. And we're going to start at verse 12. Check this out. He, she, he, the Almighty is talking about Israel right now. She, she has wearied uh, herself with lies and with great scum went forth out of her. Her scum shall be in, in the fire. And thy filthiness and lewdness, because I have purged thee, and thou uh, was not purged, thou hast not been purged from thy filthiness any more, till I cause my fear to rest upon thee. And the Almighty spoke in it, and it shall come to pass that I will do it, and I will not go back, neither will I spare, neither will I repent according to thy ways, according to thy doings, thou shalt judge, I, uh, shall they judge thee, said the Almighty. Also the word of the Almighty came unto me, and said, Son of man, Behold, I take away from thee the desire of thy eyes with the stroke, yet neither shall thou mourn nor weep. Uh, uh, shall thou, uh, thou shalt bear tears run down, neither shall thou tears run down. Forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead, bind the tire upon thy head, uh, uh, thy head upon thee, and put thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of man. So I spake unto the people in the morning, and at evening, my wife died and I did in the morning as I was commanded and the people said unto me will thou not tell these things unto us that thou doest and then I answered the word of the Almighty came unto me and say speak unto the house of Israel thus said the Almighty thy Yah behold I will profane my sanctuary and the excellency of your eyes and desire the desire of your eyes that which thy soul pitieth and your sons and your daughters whom you shall be left shall fall by the sword and you shall do as I have done, and you shall not cover your lips, nor eat the bread of men. And your tires shall be upon your head, and your shoes upon your feet. And you shall not mourn or weep, but you shall pine away in your iniquities and mourn. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign. According to all I have done, shall ye do. And when this cometh, you shall know that I am the Almighty your Yah. So this man, obeying the commandments, had to have his wife die just to be a sign to Israel and his wife died and he couldn't mourn he couldn't cry he couldn't weep he could act like it, it didn't even phase him he couldn't even do that just so the people could come to him and ask him hey what does this sign mean and he says because this is going to happen and the worst part about it is they still didn't repent so I'm going to be assigned to Israel. See, the Apostle Paul says, I wish that I was accursed, that Israel might be saved. If I could go to the lake of fire and all of Israel be saved, then so be it. Moses said that. It says, blot me out of the, the book you wrote. But he said, but spare the people. Paul and Moses said the same thing. He says, I wish that I was cursed that Israel be saved. Moses says, blot me out of thy book. And, and if I have to go to hell, but say, spare the people, spare Israel. But this man had to be assigned to Israel, and they still didn't repent. It was for almost for nothing. It was for, hey, when this comes to pass, you're going to know that the Almighty spoke to you, though. When I send you to the lake of fire, you're going to know that I set a sign before you. Ezekiel was a sign. You have no uh, witness. You have no uh, justification on why you're going to the lake of fire unjustly. There is no way you're going to try to justify how it's wrong that you're going to the lake of fire and so my point when i share these things here i'm gonna give you one more thing go ahead and give me first corinthians up chapter seven. First corinthians chapter seven see my point when i share these things is um is we are his servants and there's going to be times in life that we have to do things that we do. Our flesh does not want to do it. Mentally, we do not want to do it. It makes no sense why we don't want to why, why to do this. I, I just don't want to do it. But we have to remember we're his servants. We belong to him. Do you really think Ezekiel, he says, I'm going to take the desire of thy eyes. You really, 
show me right now who wants their spouse to die just so you could be an example and just so these people could not repent. You're like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, do it to me. Do it. I want my kid to die or I want my daughter to die to be an example to Israel. And even though Israel's not going to repent, no one's going to want that. Jonah said, hey, Noah said, Jonah, go to Nineveh. He didn't want to do that. Moses, you're going to deliver the people. I don't want to do that. The Almighty is going to call you, call you and command you to do things in your life that you just do not want to do. That's part of serving the Almighty. So give me a, while you guys got 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Shalom, shalom. So, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 22. It says, For he that is called in the Almighty being a servant is the Almighty's free man. Likewise, also he calling being free is the Almighty Yeshua's servant. I'm a Shia's servant. We're his servant. And sometimes I got to remind myself in prayer because I pray and I, I'll complain about certain things. I'm like, Almighty, what's up with this? Or why I got to deal with this? Or why this? You know, I don't understand this. And um, our complaining, our venting, our, our lack of understanding. And, and essentially, you don't want to put up with certain things or deal with certain things or be patient with certain people or whatever. It could just be how you treat people on the job like man it, love your enemies i don't want to love my enemies i've been oppressed by my enemies my whole life why do i have to love my enemies these are the people that lay me off for keeping the sabbath these are the people that gossip and backbite behind me why do i need to love my enemies and that's my flesh talking i don't want to love my enemies because i've done nothing to them and they've done nothing but oppress me i can see if they're my enemies because i stole something from them or i lied or, I, or I, I, I got out there or slept with their wife. Okay, they don't like me. But all my enemies, I've done nothing to. I've defrauded them in no way, shape, or form. Some of them I give respect and I show love and they give me hate. And the Bible says, love your enemies. And I, I do not want to do that. But this is what the all, I am his servant. I am Amashik's servant. So when it says, love your enemies, do good to them that hate you. My flesh does not want to do that. I want to punch them that hate me. I don't want to do good to them. That's opposite of what my flesh wants to do. And that's a prime example how us serving the Almighty, we got to crucify this flesh. But let's keep going. Give me uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. It says, what you know not that your body is the temple of the Ruach HaKadosh, which is in you, which you have of the Almighty, and you are not your own. So we're not our own no more. We're not our own. We're the temple. And some of you guys say you guys have the temple, and you don't. I'm not saying anyone who's necessarily watching. But a lot of these people on Facebook and YouTube say they got the Ruach HaKadosh, and they don't. It says, don't be deceived. These people that do these things, they shall not inherit the kingdom of the Almighty. They ain't going to receive the Ruach HaKadosh. So let's keep going, because the kingdom of the Most High is the Ruach HaKadosh. If you're in the kingdom now, that means you got the spirit. So you need to uh, research what's the Ruach HaKadish, because that's the kingdom of the Most High. It says, show us the kingdom. It says, you can neither see it. The kingdom is inside you. He gave us the kingdom, and that's the Ruach HaKadish, but that's another Bible study. But let's keep going. Why do we have to crucify our flesh? It says, verse 20, for you are bought with the price. Therefore, glorify the Most High in your body and in your spirit, which are the Most High. So we know we need to love because the Almighty is love. He says he makes it to rain on the unjust and, and the evil. He sends rain. He sends a harvest. He feeds these wicked people across the whole planet. There is 0 .00, probably 1% of the people actually holding a standard and obeying this, the Bible in truth. There's probably less than 1%, but he still feeds all these sinners out here. He still, even though they're atheists, he still allows them to receive food and raiment in a shelter. He still allows some of them to not get sick when he could cause sickness to happen onto them all the time. He still allows them and gives them years of repentance, even though they believe in the Big Bang or they are atheists or they, they uh, say F the Bible or whatever. Whatever words they use to go against, he still is good to them. Even though they, he, the, uh, these people are giving him the middle finger every single day. It says he's angry with the wicked every day, and yet he, he shows them love. And so there is a small thing for him to tell me, hey, love your enemies. 
So who am I to think that I'm above the Most High when he's able to love his enemies and then I'm his servant and I can't love his my enemies? So I'm better than the Most High? So I'm I'm I I I'm uh, I my standard is greater than the Most High? I'm entitled for more than the Most High? It's like no, I'm his child. So what what do children do? You have these sinner, uh, especially you Hebrew sisters, twerking in front of your kids and teaching your kids how to twerk. Someone's supposed to procreate with you. Someone's supposed to. So you're really, yeah, that you're really teaching your your daughter how to be wife material. That's, that's wife material. You got your 13 year old twerking, and they know what they're doing. They're twerking like a grown woman twerk. Like they got some of these, and they it'll be like Hebrew sisters, six or seven of them. And they're teaching the, these girls are just twerking, dressing all, revealing and whatnot. Really want some pedophile to come and eat them up. I don't get why you have your whatever. But um, they take on the parents' traits. They take on the parents' traits. And so we as his children, we should supposed to be taking on his traits. Be ye holy for the Almighty is holy. Love thy neighbor because the Almighty is love. How can you say you hate hate your brother and love the almighty how can you hate someone in which you have seen and love someone who which you have not seen you know I, someone said that it got me good and he was like and i told him that scripture i was like how can you hate someone you've seen and love the almighty which you have not seen it's like it's easy because the almighty never done nothing to me and i can as i'm like that's true the almighty's never done nothing to me i've always reaped what i sow if bad things happen is because the sinners have free will just like i have free will to go get drunk or commit adultery today i have free will Stuff that my car gets stolen and whatnot, that's people's free will. And or I just read what I sell. But the Almighty hasn't sent evil my way just to send evil my way. Bad things didn't happen and I've done nothing. It's always you reap what you sow. The Almighty is not blocked. What you sow, you shall reap. Or these sinners have free will and bad things happen. You leave your car rolled down. Hey, if it gets broken into, hey, use more wisdom. You can't say the Almighty sent that. Hey, use wisdom. Hey, you broke into cars. And then you come to the Almighty, and all of a sudden your car get broken two, three, or four, or five, six times. Hey, you got to still reap that. Just because you repent and came to the Almighty, you still need to reap what you sow. So, now let's get the shout outs. We're his servants, and we're bought with the price. Uh, shout outs. I don't think he, she sent it today. Oh, yeah, she did. Shout outs. It's loading. Karen Katora. Princess Yehuda, Angel Javan, William Mormon, Kovesh, Gia, Munya, Gia again. Oh, she gets she watched two times last week. Aran Israel, Occupate, Kamango Savio, Kamari, Jasan, Gabi, Ariel, Nava, Kashev, and Zahara. Shout out. I want you guys to make it into the kingdom. Praise the Almighty. Let me read some of these comments. Whoop, there we go. Praise the Almighty. What's the other comment? Right. Keeping these commandments shows we love him. There, there we go. That's correct. So uh, give me 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. We're almost done. It is bright today. Verse 19. Second Timothy. No, first Timothy. Second Timothy. What? Read up. What's the root? Let's wrote that scripture. Give me um. Romans chapter 9. What's the rip? Miswrote that scripture. I'll try to find it as we go on. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. All right, Romans chapter 9. We're going to start at verse 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 9. For this is the word of promise at this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son. 
And not only this, but when Rebekah also has conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. And the children being not yet born, neither have done good and evil, that the purpose of the Almighty according to election might stand. Remember that. By his purpose, not of works, but of him that calleth. It is said unto her, The elder shall sub the younger, and it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So before these kids were born and done any good and evil, he, so his purpose may be served. And you got to remember that we're his servants. But let's keep going. We're his servants. So we might, he might call us to do something we don't want to do. But let's look on the flip side of this. What shall I say? Is 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 there unrighteousness with the Almighty? Because it's like, how are you going to hate this kid before he was even born or done even evil? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? But we just read in verse 11, it says that the purpose of the Almighty according to election might stand. So back to verse 15, or I'll read verse 14. What shall we say then that there is unrighteousness with the Almighty? The Almighty forget, uh, for, God forbid. For he said unto Moses, I will have mercy unto whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion who I have a compassion. So it is not then of him that willeth, nor him that runneth, but the Almighty that sheweth mercy. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, Even for this cause, same purpose I have raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that I might make my name to be declared throughout all the earth. So it says, therefore, uh, verse 18, Therefore he have mercy on whom he have mercy, and, he, and whom he uh, will harden. So, he says he raised up Pharaoh. He raised him up just to destroy him. So when we complain about, you know, Almighty, you want me to do this or this or love my enemies, you should just be happy that he called you to be his servant. That he called you to be his servant. Because there's other people that they were called not even knowing. Pharaoh raised up and yeah, you know, he had wives and riches and gold and this. And not even knowing the whole time the Almighty lifted him up and made his name great just to destroy him. But let's keep going. Verse 18. Therefore he that have mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will harden. There, um, thou will say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault for who have resisted his will? So the other question is, then why is he going to send Pharaoh to the lake of fire? Or why would he send Judas to the lake of fire? Because it was already prophesied in Isaiah that he's going to be sold for 30 pieces of silver. So this was already prophesied. So that prophecy had to be fulfilled on some man. And that lot happened to be fall on Judas. And Judas did exactly what the Almighty wanted him to do. He literally obeyed the Almighty like we. We keep the Sabbath and we obey the Almighty. And Judas obeyed the Almighty too. Just to go to the lake of fire. Because it was prophesied before Judas was ever even born that he shall be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. And Judas came up and obeyed his will. And so they're saying, then if, if, they, didn't, if they obeyed the Most High, and, and then why does he find fault in them? Why does he find fault? Because technically Judas and Pharaoh obeyed exactly what he designed, they designed them to do. The birds chirp exactly what the Almighty designed them to do. Everything these people so he's saying why five fault, but let's keep going Verse 20 Nay, but old man who art thou to reply if against the most high shall the thing that framed it say unto him that formed it, Why has thou made me thus or have not the potter power over the clay the same lump make one vessel unto honor and another vessel unto dishonor It says he has power to do that when when someone makes a comic book Justice League or the Avengers Who's to say Thanos is the bad guy? No one gets mad that they make Thanos or Ultron or, or who's to say that the Incredible Hulk has to be the good guy or, or, or Captain America. Why can't Captain America be the bad guy or why? Who's to say that Captain America can't die? It's the person in his the person that makes the comics or makes the movies decides who's the antagonist and who's the protagonist. But they can't complain. Oh, you know what? You know, you can have me to be an actor. I don't want to die in this movie. You better figure it out. It says, who are you? I'm the director. I paid. I fund. I do this. I create this whole thing. And likewise, let's keep going. Give me a uh, second Peter chapter two. Now he dealt with vessels unto honor and vessels unto dishonor. The almighty has called his servants, 
his children to be vessels unto honor. And so the th in likelihood, yes, we have to do things that we really don't want to do. Our flesh doesn't want to do it. We mentally do not want to do certain things. Like certain things make sense. Pork, man, we uh, Hebrew people suffer the most from eating pork. High blood pressure, cholesterol, all that. You can look it up. Google that. The people that suffer the most from eating pork is whom the Almighty gave the commandments to. You reap what you sow. So it makes sense not to do certain things. The Almighty made the Sabbath, and it's healthy for you to not work seven days a week. It's healthy for you to rest and just relax, get off the TV, get off your Facebook, get off everything and just seek the most high. There's benefits for that. But there's other things like love your enemies. Like why do I want to show love to this person that gossip and talk trash? He smiles in my face, but then I word came around that he was talking trash about me, you know, a couple of days ago around the other people. And they didn't know that they were friends with me. And so they came back and told me exactly what this dude says. And so this guy's, oh, how's your kids? How this? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, knowing that you fake and you a snake. But I got to show these people love. You know what I'm saying? So, back to the scripture. Back to the scripture. Let's get it. First Peter chapter 2. Man, the sun is really chasing me today. Let's go back over here then. We have to get some shade over here. That's good. Oh, that's good. It is blazing today. It's probably like 85 right now. It's probably gonna hit 90. It's been hot. Uh, Romans. Oh no, we did Romans. Second uh, Peter chapter two. Starting at verse 1. Saying Peter chapter 2, verse 1. It says, But there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. So uh, some of these people that give up, uh, I seen a post the other day, man, I'm glad I'm out of these Hebrew Israelite camps and stuff like that, and they got burnt. The Bible says that there's going to be false camps, false congregations, false brothers, false preachers and teachers and apostles and false messiahs. So you don't get sidetracked. He warns you. You're going to warn your son that, hey, there's going to be ladies that's just going to try to get at you for advantage. They're going to try to lock you down with the kids so they can get you with child support. They're going to lock you down with marriage so they can get you with alimony. They're just going to want you because the things that you possess or the car or the house that you have and take advantage. Hey, girls, there's going to be guys that are going to say they love you just to get in your panties. They're going to want, uh, they're going to want the... Uh, the, all the benefits with none of the commitment hey watch out if they say these things if they can't wait to marry you and you're gonna warn but you don't tell them hey if you get burnt by two or three guys just give up on guys and son if you give, get burnt by two or three girls give up so just because you run two or three bad false congregations you don't give up on the word the almighty still the almighty it says shall their unbelief make the word of god of none effect god forbid let the almighty be true and let every man be a liar just because you run to these lying false churches does not mean that you should give up on the most high so let's keep going. Uh, verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by the reason of the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And you see, some of the biggest congregations out there are the most wicked. But let's keep going. And through covenants, through covenants, they shall feign words and make merchandise of you. Look, he spends a whole chapter dealing with false brothers and sisters and preachers and apostles and all this. Judgment now uh, of a long time lingereth not. Their damnation slumbereth not. So these people, these false people are made going to go to straight for damnation. They're mates for damnation. But let's keep going. If God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them in chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world, but saved nay eight persons in preach uh, of righteousness from the beginning of the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and ashes, condemn them with the overflow, make them an example of those who go after, live ungodly, and deliver just light, and vex this filthy conversation. For the righteous uh, dwelling among them, the man, uh, righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vex his righteous uh, soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Almighty knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, and reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment. But chiefly them who walk in the lust of uncleanness and despise governance presumptuously meaning they're, they're willfully they know it's wrong and they're just going to do it anyways 
presumptuous least are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak equal of dignities. Wherefore, even angels greater in power and might might be not relent accusation against them before the Almighty. Check this out. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed. The Almighty made these false preachers just so he could destroy them. Think about that. The Almighty made these people just to destroy them. So when the Almighty calls us to salvation, can we really complain? If he gives us some commandments that we really don't want to do, and we do them anyways, because we love them? Because I will much rather be on the salvation side than to may be made to taken and destroyed, like Judas, like Pharaoh, like these false prophets. Let's keep going. Made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of these things that understand not, shall utterly perish in their own corruptions, and shall receive the, the reward of unrighteousness, for they shall count it pleasure to riot in unrighteousness. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceitfulness while they feast with you. These are people that say they serve the Most High. Having eyes full of adultery, wherein they cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, heart is in exercise with covenant practices curse children oh they playing some instruments all the same curse children just think about that i'm glad we're done because now they're starting to do some instruments over there these people have no chance of salvation no chance curse children no chance to make it into the kingdom this scripture has to be filled in someone's life today and next year and the year after that the false prophets have to rise up because it was already written that these false prophets shall arise. So that lot has to fall on someone. Someone's coming out the womb today. And in 15 years or 20 or 30 years, they're going to be a false prophet made to be taken and destroyed. There's someone right now that's 13 years old in middle school or in high, someone in high school right now, not knowing that they go to a false church or they will eventually go to a false church and work their ways up the ranks and become a false preacher made to be a cursed ch child. Made to be taken and destroyed. Not even knowing it when they came out the womb. So us, back to us, the children of the Most High, yes, there will be things in our life as servants of the Most High called to salvation. Made for salvation. That the Almighty is going to ask us to do some things and we just don't want to do. But we got to go back to Luke, last scripture. Give me uh, Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Verse uh, 42. Luke 22, verse 42. It's uh, uh, when Moses was in the Mount of Olive. Oh, we'll read 39. And, and he came out and went as he want to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. And when he was at that place, he said unto them, Pray that you enter not into temptation. And we have drawn them about a stone cast, he no doubt, and prayed, Father, if thou willing, remove this cup from me, nevertheless not my will, but thy will be done. And that's every single day we have to remember that. It's not our will. We're bought with the price. We're his servants. Not my will, that thy will be done. And yes, we pray for intersection, like Hezekiah when it says, get your house in order, thou shalt surely die and not live. And he prayed, and the Almighty gave him 15 more years and whatnot. And so we do make our petition. It says, make your petition. You have not because you ask not. Ask the Almighty. The Almighty will make some exceptions. The Almighty loves to show his self strong on the behalf of those whose hearts is perfect before him. So, um, but when it comes to his commandments, we really have to think. Almashiach came down as our example. Almighty... Almighty manifested in the flesh as are an example of saying not my will but let his will be done and so there's plenty of times where I want to react or say or do certain things but I always have to remember it's not my will let let thy will be done I always have to remind myself through life brings struggles and trials and stuff and remember hey I'm bought with the price he paid for me he redeemed me through his blood I'm his servant and, and I don't live my life onto my own flesh, onto my own thoughts, onto my own will anymore. Stop my will. Let his will be done. And when you remind yourself of that, it makes it so much easier to keep his commandments. And I'm not saying commandments like necessarily sin, like, you know what I'm saying? Running around 
straight practicing witchcraft. I'm talking about even something basic, like just love your enemies. That's hard, especially being a person of color, loving your enemies. And not saying, oh, you befriend them and go kick it with them. But, yeah, if they're hungry, hey, give them some. If you see them, their car broke down. I remember this dude that was racist. And then he, he tried try to act cool and whatnot after a couple of years because he came to my company. And he lost his keys. And everyone just dipped. So he's on this job site by himself. I say, hey, he's like, yeah, my extra peers at the house. And he lived far. And um, I say, hey, you want me to give you a ride? We were working 10s, too, at that time. So it was already 10 hours. And I was like, hey, you want me to drive you to your house, get your keys, and drive you back? And that would have took at least an hour and a half. And we already worked 10, right? And he's like, he ended up finding his keys, but I was the only one. Everyone already left the job site. I was the only one still with them. Loving my enemies, which I did not want to do, right? Later on, three months later, talking all that trash to me, I said, hey, don't ever talk to me like that. He went straight to the format. I got kicked off that job site, went to another job site. Loving my enemies. You know what I'm saying? But but the Almighty, my reward doesn't come from these sinners. My reward comes for the most high. So the Almighty sees that. The Almighty sees that, you know what? I'm his child. And you know what? They crucified. You came. You did nothing but bless these people. Heal sicknesses. Heal disease. Feed the multitude. Talk to people. You know what I'm saying? Did nothing but show these people love. And at the end of the day, what did they do to you? And so it's all right. If you could do it, Almighty, and you are our example, I can do it too. It's my turn to do it. It's my turn to get burnt by these sinners that I want to punch in the face. You know what I'm saying? It's my turn to get burnt. And that's how I look at it. It's not my will that his will be done. So hopefully uh, that motivates you. You know what I'm saying? Some words of exhortation. And uh, keep pressing, keep striving. It's going to be tough. We got to have some tough wait, weeks, some tough months, some tough days. But we have some good days. We have some days where I thank the Almighty. I don't have to deal with some of that stuff like that. I thank the Almighty that, you know, I got brothers and sisters that love me and care for me. I thank the Almighty, you know, that these things in life that, you know, I'm not going to get touched by these things when the Almighty pass judgment. So, all that said being done, keep standing. Don't drop standards. Give the Almighty a hand clap. Shalom.